This video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. I've been using it for a few months now. It's super cheap, but it's great stuff. And they even sell stuff like shaving cream and aftershave. If that's your thing, check the link in the description below for more info. Oh, hey, dude. Do I, do I know you from somewhere? I mean, you look dang familiar, like as if, as if we'd done this before in some, some endless haunting loop for which neither of us may ever escape. Hmm. I'm sure that some of you had to push through a wall of boredom just to click on this video. I know that the idea of hearing about yet another Far Cry game that kind of looks exactly like the last one isn't particularly appealing, but hear me out because there's actually a fair amount to say on this title, and as much as this video is a review of the game, it's also a discussion about Ubisoft, the Far Cry franchise, DLC, expansions, grindy game structures, microtransactions, and player expectations. There's a lot I want to go over, and the only way I can fully make these points is by spoiling the entirety of Far Cry New Dawn. To anyone who doesn't want the game spoiled and just wants to know whether it's good or not, yes, it's fine, it's okay. If you haven't played Far Cry 5, I'd go play that instead because it's cheaper and it has more content. If you have played Far Cry 5, just imagine that this is another chapter added on top of that existing game. It continues and concludes the story of Joseph Seed, and if you enjoyed that, then you're going to like this as well. Just don't expect anything vastly different from what you've played before. It's absolutely more of the same. I also think it's a little bit overpriced at its current offering, so I would wait until it goes on sale. For everybody else who's happy just to have the entire game spoiled for them, let's get started. Far Cry New Dawn occupies a unique position in the current release landscape. It's been positioned as a standalone sequel or spin-off to Far Cry 5. It's set 17 years after the events of Far Cry 5 when the bombs fell and life was driven underground. Humanity has recently re-emerged and you are now rebuilding in a landscape newly vegetated with pink flowers absolutely everywhere, and pink highwomen looking to upset everyone's fun. New Dawn reuses a small portion of the Far Cry 5 map and gives it a facelift. It reuses weapons and vehicles and gives them a facelift. It reuses characters, it just gives them a face drop. So what's interesting about Far Cry New Dawn is that it looks and feels like a DLC but it's instead been marketed as a standalone game. It sells for 40 US dollars instead of the regular 60 dollars, but this still feels like too high a price for something so reused and so familiar. I look back on the Far Cry 5 season pass, which I purchased and I played through two out of the three DLC offerings. The first Vietnam themed DLC was okay. It just involved getting from one end of the map to the other and escaping. It just felt more like a mod than proper DLC. The second DLC, Lost on Mars, was really bad, like super bad. It was just tower after tower and the same reused enemy over and over again. It was really, really rough. So much so that I didn't even bother playing the third DLC pack, the zombie themed one, but I heard that was pretty average as well. Here's the thing, Far Cry New Dawn is a very average standalone game but it would have made an absolutely stellar DLC offering. And I firmly believe that had it released a more condensed product that just focused on the good bits, rather than inflate itself with repetition and grind, and had it released as a DLC for $20, everyone would be singing its praises. Everyone would be pointing to this release as an example of how to do really great DLC expansions for a single player game. But instead, Far Cry New Dawn is selling 86% less than Far Cry 5, and it's met with a collective yawn as people view it for what it is. It's an overpriced DLC pretending to be a standalone title. And it's a real shame, because when it's good, it's actually really fucking good. I did everything that I was asked. I sacrificed myself, my family. I led us into the new world. I thought that it would be glorious. I was wrong. 
The thing that impressed me most about Far Cry New Dawn is that it was able to deepen the mythology of Joseph Seed, the father and the antagonist of the first game, through a series of campaign missions that mixed narrative flair, striking presentation, and innovative mission design. It begins with you, the captain of security and the only survivor of a train crash full of people meant to reinforce the fledgling settlement of prosperity. You were second in command to Thomas Rush, someone who'd built up settlements before, but he was captured by the highwaymen who were being led by two anarchy loving twins Mickey and Lou and so the tale begins with you trying to set Thomas Rush free. Hope County is as familiar as it is fresh. It's reused portions of the old map but rather than that be a detriment I actually found it to be something I really appreciated. Very often I'd stumble on a location and explore it for a few moments only to realize oh yeah I remember this place I've been here before and I'd recall some of the moments that went down there when I visited it during Far Cry 5. I think these moments are proof enough to me at least that Ubisoft have done enough to reinvigorate the landscape and make it look nice and fresh. I similarly really enjoyed catching up with some of my old Far Cry 5 buddies. Grace the Sniper, Nick Rye the Flyboy, Pastor Jerome the Preacher Man and my personal favourite Herc. It's interesting hearing them talk about what they've been through in the 17 years since the events of the last game and they create a really strong narrative link between the events of this game and the last since they provide the institutional memory that a lot of the other game's characters can't, including yourself. And that's important because the game does bring you back into contact with Joseph Seed and his flock. When the twins attack and cripple prosperity, the settlement asks you to strike a truce with New Eden, the remaining survivors of Joseph Seed's cult family. Only when you get there, you aren't allowed admittance until you retrieve Joseph's written word, and it's here that the game really begins to pick up steam as you're transported into the first of many dreamlike sequences for which Far Cry is now quite known. My name is Joseph C. I'm known to some as the Father. I really like the presentation of these missions. They embrace the sort of pink color palette you see throughout the rest of the game in a really interesting way. And the mission design is always engaging. Here I have to stand on specific points to align Joseph's totally not Christian cross. When you're done and you've collected the book, you'll be permitted only to learn that Joseph's son, Ethan, now leads the flock as his father has abandoned them. You are what I was expecting. Maybe the same could be said for me. If you came here looking for the old man, well, do you have the book? Ethan asks you to go north to find proof of his father's death, and you're led through another of the game's more striking missions, a Heart of Darkness inspired boat ride through a poisonous waterway where the bonfires lining the shore must be lit in order to keep you alive. Joseph awaits you at the end of all that and he tells you that he didn't abandon his people, he just had to get away to hear God's plan and in so doing he discovered a tree that gave he and his people unnatural life and strength. It's very obvious symbolism, it's a bit silly, but nothing about the Joseph Seed story has ever been about subtle reference. This is God's test. With this new power, you return to find where Thomas Rush is being held, but instead of rescuing him... See how easy you can be to get along with? I wanted you to understand that. I wanted you to see that things could have ended differently if you just listened to us and went away. Instead, you chose the stick. Here it is. With Thomas dead, you're now the only hope for Hope County, but after disguising yourself as a highwayman, you learn that Joseph's son, Ethan, is willing to betray his father so long as he can continue to lead his people. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is he? He is our numero uno problem solver. Mm -hmm. He's gonna take us up north and hook us up with some crazy... Fuck is it, fruit? A sacred fruit. 
The miracle of New Eden. Yeah, that's it. Our boy here says that fruit will give you strength like you can't fucking believe. You race to New Eden to find it already torched, and after a prolonged showdown with Mickey and Lou, you fell them, and you get the first moment where these previously really one-dimensional villains show their first hint of real depth. Do not die first! You do not get to die first! I'm the oldest! I go first! God damn it! Lou! Lou! I was supposed to take care of you. I was supposed to take care of you and I didn't and I'm so fucking sorry I fucked this up, man. With the twins removed from the picture, you watch the final showdown between Joseph and his son, with Ethan partaking of this forbidden fruit without his soul being worthy. Ethan, don't. I will have what you denied me. You gave it to an outsider, but you wouldn't give it to me! I am your flesh and blood. That was God's will. You don't know God's will! I was trying to protect you, son! Taste is sweet. He pays the ultimate price for it, and it's in seeing the death of his son that Joseph finally sees how much pain and suffering he's caused, and he asks you to release him from his misery. No, Tom. There is only the justice of God's hand. this vicious cycle. Give me God's justice. Release me. Release me. The way we interpret story and evaluate its quality is always highly subjective and I think there's a critical consensus out there that this story really blows. Absolutely, the villains are one dimensional and many of the situations with them are very contrived. Absolutely, the father-son story with Ethan and Joseph is clunky and so inconsistent with the game's broader approach to Joseph's character. Absolutely, the last boss battle in the game is just an absolute train wreck and has no place in this game whatsoever. Absolutely, Joseph's rapid collapse and repenting after the death of his son is a cheap gimmick that renders the bold finish of the last game far less impactful. But I wanted to show you the majority of these story beats to demonstrate the fact that there is a real story here. There's things happening, there's important characters completing important arcs. Even though I didn't like the conclusion, I really respect the game for putting it all on the line and delivering a very full and very compelling narrative. And while critical consensus has decided that the story sucks, I have to say that I enjoyed it because I was glad to see a conclusion to the Joseph Seed saga. And more to its credit, Far Cry New Dawn is littered with just awesome missions that are so interesting and fun to play. Like this mission, where I return to one of those missile silos from Far Cry 5, only this time I need to flood it to make my way out. Or this mission, where I enter a high woman fight club. Or this mission, where I'm purposely captured and put into a working prison so I can then assassinate someone and escape. Or this mission, where I have to defend a friend trying to win a destruction derby by destroying as many cars as I can for her.
there's a lot of effort put into the mission design here, because A, that's pretty core cool to Far Cry, and B, the team didn't have to worry about developing art assets and new mechanics and all that sort of stuff. They just asked, what's some cool shit we can do with what we've got? And you get a clear sense from the consistently strong campaign missions that the bulk of the development effort went into this. All of this is couched in Far Cry's really interesting, really functional open world, with a constant barrage of either scripted situations or randomly generated mayhem. On the more scripted side, I remember hearing gunshots in the distance at a fairly regular interval at one point, and that struck me as strange. So as I followed them, I bumped into a new sidekick, Nana or Anna or something. Anyway, she's an old sniper lady who tested me with a shooting gallery before agreeing to accompany me. Oh, but you don't get my help for free. I set up a shooting range out here to keep my skills sharp. Show me what you're made of. And on the unscripted side of the equation, there's just constant craziness going on around you, whether it's highwaymen patrols or, you know, cars you can capture and take back to your base or animal encounters or shootouts between NPCs and enemies yelling random things at you or your own companions just constantly yelling. They don't ever stop yelling. The point I'm trying to make here is that New Dawn has the benefit of leveraging the really refined, really functional, and really entertaining components of Far Cry 5. And rather than just rest on those laurels and phone in some crappy campaign, they actually put a lot of effort into its narrative, its presentation, and its mission design, so that you look at it in totality and think, yeah, this is good stuff. Well done, Ubisoft. But, and of course there's a big but, all of this goodness is about 4 or 5 hours out of the 10 hour experience. And the rest of it is sort of the exact same shit that you've played in Far Cry 5, only with some new stuff added that I really firmly believe makes the experience worse. And I guess this is where we need to start talking about all the bad stuff in Far Cry New Dawn. The first thing you'll notice when you pick up New Dawn is that its gunplay and movement is so on point. I recently played through Metro Exodus, a game I really loved, but one that's often mechanically weak. Far Cry is a shooter series that goes back over a decade, and it's always had really strong mechanics. Weapon feedback is excellent, sound design is fantastic, movement feels great, stealth systems work really well, vehicles drive well and they can lead to some really great moments. The whole package feels so refined at this point, because these core mechanics just keep getting reused and improved over time. In particular, I think Far Cry just really nails run and gun combat, like you're in an outpost and you're trying to be stealthy and it works really well for a while, but then you get spotted and shit just hits the fan and then you're ducking and diving and running around buildings to flank enemies and throwing grenades and ordering your sidekick to shoot someone. It just feels like Far Cry is like 80s action the video game. If you made a game about Chuck Norris's life, it would probably be a Far Cry game with like some virtual fighter thrown in. So at the most basic fundamental level, Far Cry games always succeed in just being fun shooters, where big shit can go down in a variety of ways, and as the hero, you're always fully equipped to be able to handle it. It's frustrating then that some of Far Cry's newest mechanics collide directly with this sense of being able to handle any given situation. The main one I'm talking about is the implementation of this light RPG stuff that we've heard about in the previews. The way this works is that each weapon now has a rarity rating, so grey, blue, purple or yellow, and each enemy has a corresponding rating. So if you're using a grey weapon on a grey enemy, no problem, but if you're using pretty much anything other than a yellow weapon on a yellow enemy, you'll do almost no damage. A few moments later. Similarly, enemy damage is scaled, so you'll need to upgrade your base's infirmary to be able to soak up the damage they will dish out. Now, obviously, all of this sounds very familiar because we've all seen these systems before, and it's very much in keeping with the great Ubification of Ubisoft's portfolio, where every single one of their games ends up sharing huge numbers of game systems, making them all feel just a little bit too similar to each other. With Far Cry, though, I think it has a very disruptive effect because Far Cry was always about being able to face down whatever outpost or enemy you set your sights on, but now you can just be standing around when this happens. Yeah. 
See, there's nothing I could have done there. I just got KO'd by a pig because I hadn't grinded long enough to be able to defend myself. It's just so disempowering because you have no choice but to hide from these enemies when you encounter them. Yellow enemies are sort of, you don't see too many of them at the beginning, but purple enemies are really common at the start of the game. And I'll so often have to just dump like 12 shotgun shells into a bear's head before I can bring it down. It feels really dumb and it certainly did not add to my enjoyment of the game. Now I'll make very clear that just like I enjoyed the story and I was in a minority there, I'm actually in a minority here by saying I dislike these new systems. I think if you watch pretty much any other Far Cry review, this is the one thing that people praise as being really great for the franchise because it gives a lot of structure to your progression and was a very tangible carrot to encourage you to go out and grind resources. I can certainly see that, but I think there would have been better, less restrictive means of providing that incentive. The way to get around all of this is to grind out every single outpost and treasure hunt to collect the necessary resources, and I guess one of the principal reasons I don't like these new RPG requirements is because I don't want to do that. I didn't really want to have to do it in Far Cry 5 where it was super optional, and I especially don't want to do it here in New Dawn where it's compulsory. But in order to pad out the game's length, the entire game is structured around gathering materials and upgrading your base so that you can both progress to the next mission and you can actually do damage to the enemies you're shooting. A new and particularly cheeky padding mechanic is what's called outpost scavenging. Now, you have two choices. You can keep the outpost, or you can scavenge it. That means the highwaymen will come back with tougher reinforcements. But if you take it again, you'll get more ethanol. You can do this three times per outpost, and each time the enemies become more difficult, and by more difficult, I mean they have more HP. I'm actually fine to clear out outposts once. I really am not down for clearing out the same outpost three times each. Now, just to be clear, the grind, it's not super onerous. You will hit some roadblocks that require you to go out and collect shit instead of progressing, but you can typically cross these thresholds in around 30 minutes to an hour at most. But it's frustrating that the payoff for completing these grind requirements, it isn't some exciting new weapon or whatever, it's just the same weapon you were using before, only with a new skin, and it doesn't take this many shots to bring down a bear. Going further with the point about weapons, I completed this game in around 10 hours, and I did a moderate amount of grinding for outposts and materials. Here's all the weapons I couldn't get by the end of my playthrough. Anything with like a hammer on it, I have not yet obtained. And that's forgetting stuff like cars and helicopters and boats. There's so much shit here that I would have liked to have used during my playthrough of the game, but I couldn't unless I grinded like every outpost and every treasure hunt and every expedition. And expeditions, by the way, are basically like smash and grab missions set in different locations. I look at all this stuff and I think, yeah, I wanted to use Rex Colt's gun during my playthrough. That would have been cool. But now I've finished the game, so what, am I supposed to grind out this stuff so I can get the gun, so I can just have it and not use it on anything because I've already completed the campaign? The sad thing is, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to all of these rhetorical questions I'm asking. I can buy any weapon I like with microtransactions. I can just click on it and buy it with real world money and I guarantee you I wouldn't have to grind as hard as I do now and these weapons would be flowing a lot more freely if these microtransactions weren't in the game. My perspective on this is nearly identical to my perspective on Far Cry 5 where I commented that I really love the game but that I felt the economy was too stingy based on how I played the game and I found myself unable to access all of the weapons I wanted to. A lot of people responded that the economy was totally fine so long as you did all the outposts and collected all the materials throughout the map. And they rightly make the point that if you don't enjoy these things, then you're probably playing the wrong game. Far Cry 5 is about capturing outposts and collecting materials, so you can't complain when the game makes you do that. And I actually really agree with that perspective, or at least I really see its value. But I do think that Far Cry has evolved over the years. Its world is more dynamic and systemic. Its available gameplay systems are more diverse. Its mission structure is more complex and interesting. I think there is scope to tie the game's reward economy to these things rather than remain reliant on old fashioned outposts and material grinding. I do feel as though a lot of my commentary about Ubisoft's games these days has become as homogenized as the games themselves. I feel like Far Cry New Dawn is actually a really great core campaign experience that I really recommend to people who enjoyed Far Cry 5 
But I think its new RPG systems are misapplied, and I think the grind for materials is one that doesn't interest me, and as such, I didn't get to enjoy 90% of the game's arsenal. I remember thinking of Assassin's Creed Odyssey that it was a really terrific game that felt the need to pad out its length, whereas a smoother path through the main campaign would have made me really love the title a lot more. I feel very much the same here with Far Cry New Dawn. Had this been a title that was leaner and more focused on its campaign, I think I would have enjoyed it way more than I did. It would have also allowed the development team to scale back some of the development and put it out to market as a DLC expansion to Far Cry 5 released at around $20, which is where I really think it belongs. Had this been the case, the internet would have been awash with articles praising Ubisoft for raising the bar. Unfortunately, New Dawn has instead raised little more than a collective shrug, a real shame given that its finest moments deserve far more than that. Thanks for watching and thanks again to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring the video. I thought they only did razor blades, but they also do shaving cream and shampoo and body wash and all sorts of other stuff. They sent me a care package recently and I've been using it and it's all really great. And right now they have this deal where you can get their shower, shave or their aura kits for like five bucks, which is a steal. Check out the link in the description below and I will see you next time. Bye bye.